Now let's move to the next question. Again, this is one area that is important even for this year because this year even there are a lot of activities happening that are trying, they're trying to promote this specific species. The question reads as, the government of India encourages the cultivation of sea buckthorn. What is the importance of this plant? It helps in controlling soil erosion and in preventing desertification. It's a rich source of biodiesel. It has nutritional value and is well adapted to live in cold areas of high altitudes. Its timber is of great commercial value. See, if it's a, uh, it's, if it's a plant that is having so much of great timber value, we would have heard it in and they are not saying it is of rare value or anything, they are saying it is of great commercial value. If it is a plant like that, we would have heard about it previously. Okay, Even if you have not heard about it, look at all of these statements. They are saying, they are trying to describe the same kind of plant, right? Do you feel anything odd about it? On one hand, they are saying that it is well adapted to live in cold areas of high altitudes. So, if that statement is correct, then the second statement is what? Its tim timber is of great commercial value. In If you look at a very practical scenario, if you have only very few plants are adapted to have growth in high altitudes and the growth conditions over there are primarily very much restricted. If this is a plant that is growing in cold areas, do you think that fourth statement will be correct? Will it have so much of growth over there, so much so that we can cut the timber from it and then sell it off and then get so much of commercial money from it? No. So, these statements are quite opposite to each other. Now, on the other hand, if its timber is of great commercial value, you need to cultivate it in a large area, right? Because we will want to get all the benefits from it. But if it is a plant that can grow only in cold areas or it is well adapted to live in cold areas only, that means it's very rough conditions. So how do you do? How do you cultivate it in large amount to get all the money and the commercial value from it? So according to me, what happens over here is that third and fourth statement is a little bit opposite to each other. Now coming into the rest of the statements over there, they are also saying it's a source of biodiesel. It helps in controlling soil erosion, preventing desertification. I just know for a fact 3 and 4 will not come together. So, based on that information, let us try to see 3 and 4 coming together, it is there in D and in B. I am eliminating it. But once I eliminate 3 and 4, I mean uh, the, the fact, I'm, I have not fixed on 3 and 4, uh, which one of it is correct, but I have just figured out that these two statements will not come together. So, B is gone, D is gone. What I am left with is A and C and in A and C, I observe that statement 1 is correct. It helps in controlling soil erosion and preventing desertification. I just now have to figure out if 3 is correct. So, you reach till here and this part, you will need the additional information. So, what happens over here is this C buckthorn is otherwise also called as Ladakh gold. As I can see over here, Ladakh gold means you know it primarily goes in extremely cold habitats. Okay, It has these very small orange berries on it, which are considered to have extremely high nutritional value. So, on one hand, the nutritional value, it that, that part of it is sorted. But now we also know because it is growing in these high altitudes, it is always better to start cultivating the sea buckthorn. Why? Because on any kind of slopes or anything, if I want all the soil to be held together, soil to be uh, brought in together and prevent any kind of erosion, your sea buckthorn can be helpful. So, the answer to this question after much contemplation over here is C, 1 and 3. Moving forward. The next question uh, is a comparison between two two species primarily. Okay, it's called as the oryx and the chiru. Okay, both of them are antelopes, primarily meaning your deer species. Okay, now let's try reading about it and try to get a picture. Oryx. So I'll just write oryx and chiru. First statement reads. 
Oryx is adapted to live in hot and arid areas, where Chiru is adapted to live in steppes, semi desert areas of cold high mountains, etc. Okay, so they are saying one Oryx is hot and dry, and Chiru is cold, primarily cold areas. Oryx is poached for its antlers, whereas Chiru is poached for its musk. Okay. Oryx exists in western India only, whereas Chiru exists in northeastern India only. Okay, when I am reading itself, the one statement which stands out very clearly and could be wrong kind of a statement is the third statement. Why? Because we have not heard about any animal called as Oryx in the western part of India. I mean, if it was something for which there is poaching for the antlers and everything, obviously the number of that species would have been less. And if that number of that species would have been less, we would have heard about it somewhere. So, we do not know. There is some incoherence between these statements. So, if it is something that is occurring in your, let us look at that first statement. They are saying it is adapted to live in hot and arid areas, where Chiru is adapted to live in steppes and semi-desert areas. But here they are saying Oryx exists in western India only, whereas Chiru exists in northeastern India only. So, there is a lot of incoherence between the statements and the last statement says none of the statements A, B and C given above is correct. Here you do need to know that particular year this antelopes were asked because there was the discussion about certain cultural things called as your Shaitush wool, your Pashmina wool etc. Okay, there were several articles written on it. It's in that context this question has been asked. I want you to understand Oryx and Chiru, both antelopes, but Oryx, when it comes to it, Oryx occurs in extremely near desert conditions. Near desert means extremely arid, hot conditions. Chiru can occur as you can see in this particular thing in your steppes, semi-desert, semi-desert in the sense cold desert kind of a situation. That is the first difference. To add to it, I want you to also understand that second statement becomes wrong because when you look at the oryx, yes, it gets poached for its antlers, but the chiru is not poached for its musk. This is that uh, current affair which was there. The Chiru is an antelope which has a very high quality under fur on its body which is used to create a certain wool called as your Shehetush wool. Shehetush Okay, so this Shaitush wool is considered to be very pricey in nature and it is used to make a lot of garments, etc. But it is a quite rare thing, primarily because even the Chiru is occurring in very high altitude areas only. So, this statement gets wrong because of this. The third statement, Oryx exists in western India only, whereas Chiru exists in northeastern. This statement gets wrong because in India, the occurrence of Oryx is very rare. We do not have the animal over here primarily. Oryx is an animal that primarily occurs in your Arabian Peninsula. Got it. So, this statement becomes wrong because of it. So, obviously, the third is also wrong, but the answer is A. Now, to add to some of the facts related to Chiru, just remember Chiru is a very, Chiru is otherwise also call, called as your Tibetan antelope. Okay. Chiru is called as your Tibetan antelope. Chiru is also a very sociable animal, moves in herds, etc. The primary areas where Chiru occurs in India, when you look at the wildlife sanctuaries in the national park is, the first one is your Karakaruma wildlife sanctuary. And the second one is your Changtang Wildlife Sanctuary. Okay. 
So with that we come to the answer to this question which is your A.